Good morning, church. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing? Okay, come on. How are we doing this morning? Great. There we go. That's that so was much better. better. That was better. I hope you guys are doing awesome this morning. I am feeling so good this morning, pumped up, ready to be here. Uh, my name is Harrison Ford, and I am, yes, that's my name, and I am the youth <laughs> pastor here at Springfield First. My name's Story Hall, and I'm the children's pastor here. And we got so much going on for y'all. This um, upcoming soon, thank you so much, <laughs> we have a partnership class starting soon. If you want to become a partner with us and walk along our mission with us, Pastor Ben will be starting classes next Sunday, May 12th, and those will be at 930, somewhere in the church. You'll have to find out where soon. <laughs> All right, something that we have been hyping up that we've got coming up very, very soon is our bridge event. Okay, bridge event is for fifth and sixth graders that are moving into the youth group, okay? Um, and this is going to be, yeah, that's awesome, okay? It's going to be on May 24th, okay? So again, it's coming up. We're in May. I don't know if you noticed that, but it's May, okay? It's on the 24th, and the kids will go bowling at 4.30. You guys see it. We're going to have a dinner, and then we're going to have a lock-in for these teens, okay? It is going to be awesome. Pray for me, okay? Um, and so... Teens or adults, if you guys have uh, fifth or sixth graders moving up, make sure that you guys are a part of this. It is going to be awesome. It is probably one of the most fun things that we do all year round. So May 24th, mark your calendars. If you're looking at that slide as a parent and thinking, wow, there's no information on there, don't worry. You will be getting an email soon. You will also be getting talked to by me and Harrison whenever we can catch you on Sunday mornings or Wednesday nights. So please don't fret. We will get you all the details as soon as possible. Also, today, if you're wondering why are all these chairs on the stage, they're usually not up there, we have a very special service for you today. You get to hear from all of our ministry leads about ways that you can get connected in our church. If anything here sticks with you after service and you want to jump in and be a part of this, we have two spots in the lobby where you can fill out a survey, fill out a form, and join our teams. You will get notified by our ministry leads as soon as they get your responses. So there's one on this side and one on that side. Visit our hub to see Harrison and fill out that form if you need help doing the QR code on your phone. All right, guys, one more thing I forgot to mention. Last week, we had a spaghetti dinner dessert auction to raise money for the teens. Uh, and I just want to let you guys know, as a church, you guys, you guys came through, okay? You guys did awesome. We raised over $2,000 for the teens to go to camp. So that is so awesome. And I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and praise God for it. Go ahead and stand. Let's get back into worship this morning. God's faithfulness is awesome, amen. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been the forever with thee.
This week for me was a renewal. I've been given the opportunity to be a part of worship for, I figured it out, it's been almost eight years and I signed up for one. I'm not sure what the return on investment is there, but if you're in banking, just ignore it. But this week, you know, every week there's a staff meeting, and our staff has grown in the last three years. I don't get to be a part of that often, once in a while a Monday holiday, but I got to sit in a van for a 10-hour staff meeting on Tuesday. But I tell you what, I've been in the church for 50, nearly 53 years, and God's got good things happening here right now. Amen? I'm the old man of the bunch and I've got a different energy after riding in a van because those that are on staff have such a heart and such a vision and it starts with one simple thing putting God first raising their hallelujah no matter what they're facing and just loving on people around them if you've been part of this church for very long a couple years ago I shared the story about how this song was written a little boy diagnosed with a brain tumor less than two years old, right at two years old, and sitting in the hospital, a team much like this sat around the worship leader, and they wrote this song to give God praise in any circumstance, and just simply raise a hallelujah. This morning as we worship, that's what you're to do. You're just to give God the praise. Your whole focus is on Him. We may be here, but we're just a vessel. We're a conduit. I always pray, empty us out and fill us up with Christ that you may be seeing him in us and it just flows right to heaven. Look at him vertically today. Look at him and give him the praise, would you?
you know, as I moved away um, and I come back, I have really realized how much this church means to me. Um, you know, going out and trying to find my new home church really is hard. Um, Kansas is a completely different place. Kansas is entirely new, um, whether it's, you know, church, doctor, friends, um, it's all brand new to me. And the church is somewhere where I feel safe. The church is somewhere where I feel, you know, at home, where I am loved. And trying to go out and find that new home, really, really hard. <laughs> For three months without that is so hard. And every time I come home, I just feel the embrace of my church family. And I just don't want to leave every time I come home. And this song just, it just... It just puts that into words, you know. But, you know, I just, I keep trying. <laughs> All my words fall short. I got nothing new. How could
as we sing those last two songs, all I can think about is maybe you're in a situation in your life that all you can say right now is hallelujah. Praise God. And what that means is so unusual to what the world thinks that means. To be able to praise God in the lowest of moments. To be able to praise God when you feel alone and lost. When you can praise God through the storms. It's what makes us look different. We understand our hope. We understand the one who controls the storms. We understand the one that can help us get through the doubt and get through the pain and the brokenness. Right? Maybe this morning you're, you're living right now in a place that it's been hard to say hallelujah. That you're overwhelmed, that you're stressed, that you're just, you're worried nonstop. I want you to know God loves you. God is there with you. The one that created all this, the one that sits above everything else, is so worried about you that he wants to cast all our carries and all our fears and all our worries and all the things that are junk in this world upon him. He wants it. And this morning can be that moment. Maybe you need to have a moment with God as we go to prayer of just having a hallelujah. Whatever you're broken in, whatever you're hurting, he wants to hear your hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. How you're working, how you're loving, how your provenient grace is with us. Lord, we understand we live in a broken world and many times we feel broken ourselves. Maybe we haven't had a joy in our life for a while. We're dealing with some uh, scary stuff. We just feel broken and we doubt. Lord, you come in and may you you love us through our doubt. May you love us through our, our brokenness. May you love us through our lost moments. And may we yell back hallelujah. May this morning be a new morning. May we feel refreshed. May we feel your love. May we feel the moment of purpose that we know why we're here, and it is to be in your presence. We thank you. We thank you for sending your son to show us how to live, to show us how to love, to be the sacrifice, to show us that you are the resurrected king. This morning, may we feel fully alive because you live in us. Lord, as we give tithes and offerings this morning, may our heart be full of joy when we we give. We pray that you take this and we glorify your kingdom with it. We give you all the praise. Amen. Ushers. morning church so glad you're here this morning Um, we are in the the last uh, sermon for four and um, and it's a little bit different Uh, you won't hear uh, me speak very much so you're welcome all right 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> uh, glad you're here. Um, uh, in fact, those who are ministry leaders, go ahead and come on up uh, and take your seat. All right. Uh, you get to see the faces. Um, and, and if you, I, I meant to tell you, you got stuff under your seat. If you really want to throw it, this is the time. No? All right. Just me. You guys are lucky. All right. Um, as we end this series, um, I want to talk about what it means to be all in. And I kind of, I started this last week and you're you seeing it? No. Okay. Um, and I want to kind of give you, um, a mini sermonette of what we're talking about today, all right? Um, You can find it in Mark 4, 35 through 41. I don't have a slide this morning, so you got to just trust me, or I encourage you to get your Bible apps out, get your your Bible out, because there's three places in which I want us to kind of highlight, if you got a highlighter, or just um, really keep note. But as I read this, uh, I want you to listen, all right? That day when the evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took, took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in, was in the stern, sleeping on the cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we, we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was pl- completely calm. His disciples, he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Uh, last week, kinda, I kind of hinted at this boat scene. Right, and they're they're at the Sea of Galilee, and they're about to get in. They he's been preaching all day, all night, like he's been doing work. Um, and he says, "All right, it's time to get in this boat." And the disciples, or half the disciples, understand how to fish, how to do the boat. They're handed in, and Jesus is exa- exhausted and gets in. All right, these are the three things I want us to really focus on when we look at it, and, and give, me, give me a moment, all right, to explain. The first one in this is, let us go. If you see it, if you have your Bible in front of you, highlight that. The other one is, just as he was. And then the third one, there were, there were also boats with him. All right, these three things I want us to focus on for the understanding, if we're going to be an all-in church, right, this, uh, this idea is we are not just to sit still in our faith. We are all called to go, right? And if, uh, if the boat scene makes you nervous, good. Because it wasn't something that, like, can you imagine putting us all in a, a, a fishing boat this morning? That would be a, a chore, right? I thought about having a boat up here on stage and show us and try to get us all on here, right? be a chore, the youth pastor in me wants to do it, right? Uh, have you ever seen the, the, those old phone booths and see how many uh, college students you can squeeze in a phone booth? Can you imagine being the first one? Start having, uh, start having uh, some panic attacks, right? Uh, I feel it right now. Anyway, uh, imagine this idea that Jesus is with us in this moment, and he says, let us go. Are you ready to go? What holds you back this morning? All right. Second thing. This is what I love. Uh, my wife, and I'm going to pick on her really quick, and it's awesome. I love this about her. I've told this before. We're going to be going on vacation uh, this summer, and she's probably going to have everything, an itinerary for everything, and she's going to have it packed and loaded and ready to go. Anybody else have somebody like that in their life? I'm going to tell you, I love that. It's wonderful because all I do is pack it up and go, and I complain. I'm like, really? We need this? This? Like, and then I drive because I, I'm the driver. What's frustrating is I don't get to have a rear view mirror because everything's packed so high. Anybody else? 
All right, it's just not me. I, I feel like I, I'm in my people, all right? Um, what I like in this moment of, of Jesus and his disciples, guess what he did? He just got up and left. He didn't take anything with him. He didn't prep for it. He, he went as he was. I think a lot of us are, are still waiting to go because we don't feel like we're ready to go or qualified to go or have all the information to go or all that stuff. I want you to know God wants to use you right now. You are qualified not because of you, because of what God is doing in you this morning. Do you know that? That you don't have to have a theology degree. You don't have to have a, a life all together. You don't have to. Let's look at the disciples if you read the scripture. They didn't have it together. And he called them as they were. And they picked up and left. Are you ready to do that? Because he wants that. He, imagine being a church that's saying, let's go. Let's go as we are. Right? Right? And going back to people and like, yeah, there are moments that you have caught me in my life and I have not shown Christ's love, but I want you to know I, l- I live with a forgiven father and he has forgiven me and I want to show you that. That I am broken and in those moments I showed my brokenness and I am forgiven and I pray that you forgive me and I pray that I can continue to move God into your kingdom with us. Right? The third thing. And I love this about this. There were also other boats with him. These are things that I didn't catch the first time I've ever read this. A big storm happens. Disciples panic. And what's Jesus doing? He's just sleeping. Have you ever felt that way in your life? That life is just coming, it's burning. Everything is crumbling down. And you're like, God, do you care? Like, what's going on? And you scream out, God, God, please save us. And this is this moment. And he wakes up and he tells the storm to calm and be peaceful. You know what I love about this imagery that I have missed so many times? You know who else was in this, this lake at this moment? Got to experience the same peace that those who were in this all in got to see. When our life is falling apart, and we can reach out to God, and he, he calms the storms. The idea is this. The moment that everybody else is around us, guess what they get to experience? The peace that you have received. And instead of bringing chaos into their lives, you are that moment where he says, winds stop, waves stop. Let there be peace. Right? Imagine a world that we live in that we get to be the example of that. That when we're all in, it changes everything. That we are people that's ready to go as we are. And when we go, we bring peace and comfort around us. And you don't know how God is working through you. You just know he is. This morning, you see these wonderful faces up here, and there's a reason for this. It's not a staring contest, all right? The reason is this. We have these ministries that we already have established in our church, and we want to, as I was preparing for this message, all I could think is, well, I want our church to know what we have going on and how they can participate. That it's not just a few that makes this happen. It is us that makes this happen, right? Right? And I don't want us to have excuses of why we don't get involved. Well, somebody else has already got that. No, we need you. All right? And we have ways to do that. We want to be a church that is active participating for the kingdom of God. Right? If it, if it has called you to come to youth ministry and throw a dodgeball at a kid's head, do it. It's fun. It's a stress reliever. But I will tell you, as goofy as that sounds, it has changed lives in my life that I got to have people involved in youth ministry to do that. And then they, t- they just because somebody was interested in them in, in participating in such goofy things, it changed them and showed them the grace and mercy of God that they accepted Jesus Christ. 
in the little things that every one of you are gifted. Every one of you. And we need you all in this boat doing what God has called us. Without you, it just doesn't run right. Please do it. Please get involved. Don't let any excuses come about. We're going to show you how to do it at the end, too, if there's in, like to communicate. But I want to hand it over. I don't want to keep talking because uh, I know I can. Anyway, uh, I want to introduce... Uh, Dory and Harrison, and this is our, our children's pastor and our youth pastor, and they're going to tell you ways to get involved in their ministries. Yeah, absolutely. So first off, um, I, we're going to kind of go back and forth here, but I just want to start you guys off by asking you a question. Okay, do you have a slide for that question for me? Maybe you don't. There we go. Who was significant? Back one. Last one. There we go. Who was significant to your growth? So I want you guys to think back, okay, while we're kind of speaking, while we're going through this, I want you to think, who was significant to your growth? Like growing up, in the kids' wing, in the youth group, or even outside of church, who was significant to you, right? I want you to think about that person. Awesome. We're so excited to be here talking to you guys today. We decided to partner up because we truly believe that the discipleship of children starts when they're born and goes through young adults, and then we release them into the adult ministry. So we teamed up today because and our goal is there that yeah. perfect <laughs> so our goal is to impress the love of God into these children and I'm going to tell you why if you would open your Bibles to Deuteronomy 6 4 through 7 this is called the greatest commandment Jesus uses this whenever he was asked by the Pharisees what is the greatest commandment if we had to know one rule what's the rule to know and it's to love God and love others of course, he uses more verbiage than that. But that's the main idea is to love God and love others. But if you've never read verse 7, I encourage you to do so today. And it says, impress these on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Impressing God into our children does not happen for an hour on Sunday mornings. It doesn't even happen for an hour on Wednesday nights or an hour in a small group during the week. It happens 24-7. 365, and you guys are in those children's lives way more than Harrison and I are. So we want to partner with you today, parents. We want to walk alongside your family. We want to be a part of your family, and we want to be in your environments. We want to go to your kids' games. We want to be a part of everything that they love to do because we love your families. But we can't do that alone. Church, we need you to partner with us to support these parents. Parenting is hard, and it's isolating, and we want to be the village that you guys have whenever you need something, whenever you need your children to feel supported in something that you just can't manage right now. We want to be a part of that for you. So church, we need your help, and it doesn't look like coming for an hour on Sunday mornings. We have so many opportunities for you to get involved, and Harrison's going to share a little bit about what the youth group needs, and I'll share what the kids' ministry needs. But I just want you guys to think about this question, really think about it, and think about the amount of people that it took to get you to where you are today. Every single person in your life played a part in that. And I want you guys to have the opportunity to impact as many children as you can. Because we are called, it's biblical, <laughs> to impress the love of God into our children when they wake up, when they lie down, when they're driving on the road, and when they're doing their day-to-day -day life. So... <clears throat> On top of pouring into our families and our families pouring into our students and in our kids, which is so, so, so important, uh, that hour that we do have them, man, there's a lot that goes into that hour on a Sunday morning or on a Wednesday night, right? Like that time that we have, so much happens, right? So on top of just being able to pour into our families and our parents, uh, we, need, we need help, right? We need committed volunteers. Um, this week, the staff, as you've probably already heard a million times, the staff went to a retreat, a conference, all right? And we got to see a huge living and breathing church. And it was awesome, right? And uh, we are a living and breathing church. And we're on track to be living and breathing more and more and more as time goes on. But part of that is that we have to have volunteers who are committed to being that light, right? And so one of the reasons I ask you who was significant to your growth, right? You probably think of someone. You probably think of a person uh, that is significant to how you were raised, how you were brought up, right? And so what I'm asking you guys to do is to be that person for these students, to be that person for the kids. Like, we need your help because it's, like, it's not just on us, right? 
Like we do a lot, we do a lot of like the admin stuff, we do a lot of the planning and all this stuff, but when it comes to the relationships, we need your guys' help, right? Like not every single teen is going to connect with me, okay? Some teens probably think I'm weird, right? Yeah, see? I told you, right? Like we need help, and I know the same goes for kids, right? And so we have to, we're trying to make a living and breathing community, a living and breathing ministry, and so we need you to commit to helping, all right? And commitment, like, I don't want you to think, oh, I can't commit. I have this going on. I have this going on, right? Like, that's okay. Because part of committing is understanding that as leaders, as volunteers, you guys are leading by example. So if you go, oh, my family's got something out of town, so I can't be there, then absolutely go. Like, go to your family thing and come back and say, I wasn't here because I was loving my family. I was pouring into my family. I was doing this. You lead by example, right? You can't just give up everything. And say, all right, I'm all in. I'm not doing anything except for helping with the youth group. Like, that's just not, I I understand that. Like, you guys have life. You have other things going on. I'm asking you to be committed emotionally. I'm asking you to be committed in the lives of these students. And it looks so much different, right? We have so many goals coming up. And, man, this conference got us pumped. Let me tell you, we are pumped, all right? We have so many goals, and we are asking you guys to help us fulfill these goals, all right? We are seriously so excited. It's going to be so awesome. Uh, and one of the things that I heard at this conference that I wanted to share with you guys is this. They said the next generation is worthy of committed volunteers and ministries that live and breathe. Right? The next generations, these generations that we're trying to, to bring up in the church, they are worthy of your guys' help. It's not just us. Right? So remember that. Uh, and... I want to ask you now, I asked you who was significant to your growth, and I hope that you thought of someone, but now go ahead and go to the next question. Who is going to be significant to the growth of the next generation? And I hope all of you say yes, right? But I know that's not going to happen. It's all right. All right, but who is going to be significant to the growth of our next generation? So going back to children's ministry, I have a couple very specific things that I want you guys to think about today. Again, this conference was amazing, (laughs) and something that really showed me is that I can't do it all myself, and I need your help, but that doesn't look like Sunday mornings. Maybe kids give you anxiety, and that's okay. It's a lot of chaos that we have to manage back there. So maybe you have time during the week that you want to come and write birthday cards for these families. Maybe you want to print out crafts. Maybe you want to laminate some of our posters for our classroom. Maybe you want to paint our classrooms and help us manage those. If that's your heart and you want to be a weekly volunteer with children's ministry, I encourage you to fill out that form and I will connect with you. By filling out this form that you're going to get at the end of service, it's not saying I want to do Sunday mornings or Wednesday nights or I want to be up on stage or I want to do this. It is just giving us your name and your email and your phone number so that we can connect with you and figure out how we can partner with you. We want you guys to have a unique part in this ministry because our ministries are filled with so many unique children, so many unique families. And you get to connect with kids in ways that we will never be able to. So even if you have a preconceived notion of what children's ministry looks like, I want to challenge you to set that to the side. Give me your name and let me talk to you and figure out how I can best partner with you to serve our children. Good morning. I took my mic off and realized I needed one, but what God laid on my heart this week to share was going through my mind, um, as I shared earlier, I've been leading worship for probably almost 30 years now, over almost eight here at this church, and it's one verse that I always go back to in Romans, off your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, because this is your act of worship. Worship is a lifestyle, and I've shared that from the day I started to now. And uh, I've got an incredible team. Unlike many ministries in the church where COVID wiped out things and we had to kind of jumpstart and get going, the tech team, the production team, the worship team, we grew during COVID. Before COVID, we had about a dozen, 15 people involved. We've got over 30 volunteers now that serve in either production, uh, upstairs on a Sunday, here on the platform, just being a facility and a conduit for you to worship. And it's just been a blessing uh, to have that happen. i got to get to the right note here. 
They may have wanted me to count how many Mountain Dews I had this week, but that's a story for a different day. But one of the things that I wanted to share is that the key to having an irresistible worship experience is to have people that are totally committed to Christ put him first. Play, sing, or touch buttons and run keyboards and slides for his glory. They need to be trained well enough so musicians, you actually need to kind of know how to sing a little bit. You need to kind of play guitar a little bit, but we work with that too. Tech team, we train you. It's nothing. We've got several stations up there, things you can learn. The obvious aspect is that, you know, the people on stage, I just shared, they need to be able to play, they need to be able to sing a little bit. But upstairs is a great opportunity. Don't raise your hands to this. If you're an introvert, you don't have to talk to the kids. You don't have to talk to the youth. You don't have to greet at the door. It's a great opportunity. You can slip in before anyone else is here, run up the stairs, and hide. <laughs> right? <laughs> Amen. I hear them. <laughs> But they do a phenomenal job. You don't know this. I've got about 15, 16 people that rotate three stations up there at this point in time. The only time you notice them is when the microphone doesn't come on, slides a little late, or the lights aren't quite right. It's the only time you even notice they're up there, right? They do a great job. But it's absolutely a spot you can learn. If you know how to mess with PowerPoint, I can teach a pro presenter in about a half an hour. There's great opportunities for you. In all aspects of this team, though, they understand what's important, and that's Christ first. Living a life, carrying it out. We have times to connect. We get together. I've done this poorly the last year, but it's going to improve. We get together at our house and we just hang out and we encourage one another. But if you'd like to know what this ministry is about, if you've got kids, you hear from your kids. If you've got teens, you hear from the teens. But if you want to know what the worship ministry is about, I just invite you, starting on Wednesday, May 15th, just come sit with us. We've got people already doing this. I say May 15th because this week... Uh, Lou High has their play. We're not having rehearsal Wednesday night. So come on the 15th. Just sit with us. Experience what it is. I guarantee you'll hear wrong notes. I guarantee you'll hear Tim sing the wrong words. Because it's rehearsal. I do that on Sundays too. You already hear it. You won't hear us polished. We won't be rehearsed. That's what it's for. But it's an act of worship. And that's what's important when we gather on Wednesday nights. We laugh together, we cry together, we pray for one another and lift one another up. And that's what it's about. So when you get that opportunity later today on that sheet, there's going to be two options for worship, tech and production or worship team. Just indicate it. If you don't know, check them both. We'll sit and chat. But come sit with us on a Wednesday night. That's an important aspect to realize what we're really all about. And to just see if that's where God's calling you to serve or not. Hello, my name's Jeff Owen, and I lead the prayer uh, groups that we do uh, for our church ministry. And uh, the Lord kind of rewrote things for me this morning on my notes, but one thing he's, we're going to keep is out of John 15, 7, says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. For by this, the Father, my Father, is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. So that's where we need to try and be in prayer. But the rewriting this morning was done through these songs this morning. We pray many times when we're singing. And singing hallelujah, as he was mentioned, is praising the Lord. And the one song about raising a hallelujah says so many things that I think sneak by us. It says with every, every, uh, everything inside of me. So that's what we do on Wednesday nights. And that's what we do on Sunday mornings. Sunday mornings at 845, we try and gather together. Wednesday nights at 630, we gather in a prayer room. And we have a faithful group that comes there. Also, we raise a prayer, a hallelujah. I will work, and the darkness 
will flee. We all know who that darkness is. In the middle of the mystery, sometimes we have to pray. When we pray fear, and this that song actually says, addresses fear. Fear, you lost your hold on me. Death is defeated because the king is alive. In the presence of my enemy, and again, we all know who your enemy and my enemy is. And in that unbelief time sometimes, and it's my weapon, that prayer and praise is that weapon. And guess who comes to fight for me in those times? Heaven comes to fight for us. Wednesday nights, 6.30, we gather together. We try and make prayer time a priority, and we want to see answers. We just saw an answer to prayer from last weekend. $2,000 $2,000 raised for the teens, all because of people taking part and prayer being part of that preparation ahead of that. We're going to plow the field. There's farming going on right now. We're plowing the field and getting the field ready for seeds to be planted and then things to grow. And that's what prayer has to do with. It starts that so that the harvest can come later. Uh, Sunday mornings also, as I mentioned, 8.45, a group of us meet to pray for pastor, to pray for the message, to pray for each one of you as we're here waiting for you to walk through the doors and uh, also to, to pray for the praise team that God will come in his Holy Spirit to work in the hearts of people. And that's what our prayer ministry is about. If you want to be a part of that, Please come join us and please share and please sign up. Amen. I think I'm next. Uh, my group is called the Care Ministry. I'm not going to get up and stand up there because I'd start getting nervous and prancing all over the place. So, Care Ministry, C A R E. Care. Oh, look up there. I didn't prepare that slide. Thank you, whoever did that. Care about reaching everybody. We do that. We're, we're concerned about it. Small group of people, there's five of us right now. We'll send a card. We might take cookies. We might make a phone call. We might drive by to see you only if you say you want us to. Nobody's going to be pecking on your door with a cherry pie, you know, saying you're there. We want you to know who we are. But the care ministry cares about everybody. Young people, there's a grant. Is that right? Martin. See that? I had his name almost right. It's it's Martin. Martin. That was real close. Wasn't that real close? Martin. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was, it was right there, right there. And I only asked it three times already. So anyway, met him out front, Joe's buddy. And I think if he got a card from here saying, hey, it was great for you to be here. We may be a little nuts, but please come back. I think he would appreciate that. We have sent cards to some of the young people that are in here, and from their parents, I've heard it meant something. You wouldn't think that anymore with social media and Facebook and all that. You can just punch a button. But to get something in the mail and you're holding it in your hand, it means something. There's a gal over here in the corner. She's hiding today for some reason, Christy. And uh, she got a card one time from us and said, I'm just giving our group. It wasn't from me, so I don't have to take credit. God gets all the glory for it. She said, you won't believe what that, how that affected me, that you guys care if I come, that the church really cares if we come. Now, let me tell you, these are not notes at all, but I wanted to look prepared. This is my bulletin and the thing he gave me. But Ben said I only had two minutes. <laughs> I said, can I have ten? <laughs> nope, two. I said, okay, you can't control me. <laughs> so... Anyway, let me tell you about the care. If you got a friend that we don't know that's never been here, that doesn't matter. Get the name to the office, to us on a card. Behind you are some real fancy cards in the pews. You can check them out. They're not pews, chairs, excuse me. Check them out. They're real fancy. We lots of money on these things. Fill them out, and we will get something to you or to your friend. Uh, you know, it could be 
Her nephew, Gina's had, a, had us pray for her nephew. Grandkids, I mean, right? See, I get all that stuff mixed up. But she knows who I'm talking about. And she signed a card, so we did. We pray. We go visit. We do all kinds of crazy stuff. Not crazy, crazy, but just about anything. We're open for it. And the group is wonderful. So please be praying for them. And we just had a recent person, member, uh, partner, and decide they wanted to join us. So if you want to be a part of it, we'd be glad to have you. Hey, hey. So I'm Gloria Sangrolce, and I'm in charge of the Connect team. And um, if you know me, you probably know that I am a big, big believer that we need each other. I believe we need each other for friendships, for support, for prayer, for camaraderie, for encouragement, and to urge us forward in our walk with Christ. One version of Proverbs 27.9 says, Sweet friendships refresh the soul and awaken our hearts with joy. And that's the ministry that I love to be a part of. Um, God made us to connect and to be connected to one another to build a community a community of First Church of the Nazarene. Um, there are a variety of opportunities and ways to serve and be involved in the Connect area. Um, a big one is our First Impressions team. Each Sunday, we have a dream team of volunteers who hold doors, shake hands, valet cars. <laughs> they meet, they greet, they welcome, they answer questions, they pass out weekly bulletins, and share Christ's love with each person who cro comes across our threshold. This is the First Impressions team, and this is a wonderful opportunity to serve, and we would love to have you join us. We need more members of our team as we gear up to increase our valet parking and um, also add additional welcoming opportunities. So, And those people serve, um, we have a rotating schedule and so we kind of try to ad adapt to different people's schedules. So if you, uh, some people only serve once a week. Some people are on there every single week. So, and we love them. <laughs> so, um, but it's a great team. Um, the Connect team also hosts and assists with a variety of events throughout the year. Some previous events, and we mix them up, change them up every year. So there'll probably be some different ones this year. But in the past, we've done the block party. Um, the All Church Valentine's Breakfast uh, Trivia Night, which is coming again this fall, um, and the Spring Fling. Um, if you enjoy helping with setup or decorating, if you like a good theme like me, um, if you like get-togethers, if you enjoy cooking or hosting or greeting or entertaining, um, we have a place for you at an upcoming event. Um, if you have any questions about any Connect opportunities, please reach out to me. Please sign up. We'd love to have you. Um, I'd love to talk to you to connect and to get you involved in our Connect team. Just a little bit more. All right. So while I'm here, and I do have a mic, <laughs> I'd like to promote our Soul Sisters group. Uh, sorry, guys. Um, this is for the gals. Okay. Um, we host monthly events such as ladies' night out, craft night, cooking demos, shopping outings, and much, much more. We, once again, we try to change our activities, but we do have monthly things, sometimes a couple things in a month. Um, we have a lot of fun. <laughs> we do have a Facebook page that I would encourage you to join. Um, it's Soul Sisters, First Church of the Nazarene, Springfield, Illinois, where you can get updates, encouragements, um, find out about upcoming events. You can also message me on there. Um, we have a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, once again, if you have any questions or would like to know more about Soul Sisters or how to get involved in our upcoming events, please reach out to me. We would love to have everyone connected in that regard as well. So my name is Dave Buchanan, and I head up the Grow Committee here at our church. And... There are so many opportunities for you to be involved in areas of teaching and reaching out to others. One way that we feel is necessary to grow is to actually have more opportunities for study and for fellowship and, and other areas besides just this morning worship. And one of the main ministries 
that we oversee in the GROW Committee is small group or connect group, whichever one you like to use. Um, we feel like small groups are a place where we can get to know each other in a more personal, personal intimate way. Uh, we get to know how we can lift each other up, how we can support each other, how we can be praying for each other. And you know, it's a little different than just passing in the hallway and asking, how are you doing today? And you know, it always, well, I'm fine, how are you? Sometimes that's not always true. And in a smaller, intimate group, we get to understand the struggles, the heartaches, and the praises that we have day to day. So it's, it's good for us to share that together and to learn how to support each other. And as we grow, and we are growing, and that's exciting, we need these groups so that we can get to know each other on a personal level, right? How many of you are in a small group right now? Just raise your hand. Now that's awesome. So that's about, you know, I mean, it's, it's pushing close to 50%. But wow, wouldn't it be great if we had 100%? That's my goal. But in order to do that, we need leaders. We need people that are committed. We need people with that gift. And I believe that there's people here that have a spiritual gift just for leading, just for teaching. God's given you that. A little piece of his DNA born into you. And you need to use that. Think about that. But also, we could use hosts that just want to open their home to groups so that that leader isn't always pressured to have it at their home. And most of all, we need you to be a part of one of those groups, not just, just to share your knowledge, just to share your life experiences, because that's going to help somebody else down the road. Jesus had the first small group, right? And it hasn't changed, really. It's about preparing us to meet life's struggles and get the gospel outside of these walls. Still the same. So we need, I think we have like, I think we have five groups right now. And that is awesome. But in order to keep those groups small and intimate, we need more leadership. And leaders of your groups now, those five, I, I would encourage you to mentor and raise up leaders out of those groups so that they can move <laughs> and start another group. You know, I, I did small group for probably close to 18 years I led, and it's awesome. But now I get to kind of take a new position and kind of oversee that. But I would encourage you, if you have that gift, to use it. Thank you. All right, folks, I'm Logan Sargentson, and I uh, am kind of the head of our serve movement here. The funny thing about serving is if you volunteer for anything, you're serving the Lord, which is the best part about my job because anything we do, I can – take a little bit of credit for it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, a few things that they said, you know, a way to serve, you could help Dory out like uh, painting classrooms. That's a great way to serve. Anybody can paint, uh, whether good or bad. If you can, I mean, as long as you can keep it off the floor, in my opinion. Uh, you know, Harrison needs some committed volunteers. You could help out with production, like Tim said. Uh, some other ways, some other opportunities that we could really use some help with. We don't have a whole lot of people who have a passenger endorsement to drive our church van around. It's super simple to go take the test, come see us, we can set it all up. If we had just a few more drivers, I think it really would probably take the burden off of the few people that do drive, if you're interested in that. Um, all you have to do is uh, not wreck. The, uh, uh, we also we host at least two church work days a year. Uh, those are pretty well attended, 
but uh, we have a plethora of different projects we do on those days. We get a lot of stuff done, a lot of little easy projects anybody can do. Um, that's another great way to serve. Uh, we've had homeless drives you guys have donated to. Um, and, you know, like Ben said last week, don't bury your talent, right? We want to bring our talents out and, uh, I guess, make them better, or, you know, make other places better by using our talents. Um, so let's let's try to, I guess, work on that. So you can come see me if you have anything. You know, Sean Arthur, we got him on retainer. He's a great mechanic. Anytime, you know, we have a mechanical issue on a vehicle, you know, we can call him. Um, I'm just good with my hands. I'm not that special. But, uh, you know, another thing, like Jerry, he'll go out and of, ahead of like Easter, we'll go set up uh, tables and chairs. Something as simple as that in the gym could be a huge help and take the burden off of a few people that do it. You have 10 that show up, you're done in 20 minutes, we all get to go back home and watch whatever sports or whatever you guys do. So that's all for me. Thank you. Have a great Sunday. Oh, hey, yeah, since Gloria got to plug the Soul Sisters, uh, we got a men's group coming up in the middle of June, and I promise you, we're, yeah, we're going out to the park, and I promise you uh, the men's group is probably, in my opinion, a little cooler than the Soul Sisters there. So, <laughs> so. Never. Uh, Never. <laughs> that's it for me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, if this is like your first or you've just been visiting, I want you to know, uh, I, it might not feel like this was for you, but I want you to understand something. We want to be a church that is for you. And it takes all of us to do that. We want to care that you're here. We want to care that, that in, if, you, if you're around our boat, around our church, you can feel the storms at peace because we have called out to God and the reason that we have all these ministry heads up here this morning is to show you that we are actively pursuing God and you we want to love God with all our heart and our mind and our soul that so much that it affects everything else around us and that you see it and feel it and that you can have your doubts you can have your questions you can you can Wonder if we're really authentic and put us to the test. But we want you to know that you're welcome and loved. And we share these this morning for us to go with the idea of let's go as we are and be ready to share with the rest of those that our God controls everything. That he's bigger than the storms of our life. All right, stand with me. And let me tell you, there's a way to sign up. We have a QR code back there that says volunteers, and it'll send you to a website. Or you can go to the hub and talk to Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, or, right? I have not used that joke yet. <laughs> I've been holding on to that. But I want, I want us to have our ways that there's no obstacles in the way of using the gifts and talents that God has give us, given us. We need to be a church that is ready to go, as we are, and that's impacting the other boats around us. Let's do that, church. Let's pray. Generally, Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence. Lord, may we be all in this morning. May we hop in the boat as we are with no excuses, Lord, and may we go out into a world and we are ready to calm the storms through you. May others see it, feel it, and want a part of it. We give you all the praise this morning. Amen. You're dismissed.